Right, so let's look at the aspects that are important for experiment two. The assessment for experiment two uh, entails, of course, again, report writing and then assignment questions. So the assignment questions, of course, as always, you need to use the mark allocation to guide you of how much you need to write, and that counts 50 marks. The other 50 marks are made up of a title, an abstract, an aim introduction and background, and some references. Right, so the references in the title is quite easy. The abstract is a section, and then the aim introduction and background is one long section with about a page or two pages that you need to write on. The title, um, as always, you need to think think of a title, a unique title that's not just copied from the practical guides. In other words, the isomerism of chromium complexes is not the title. You need to have a unique title. Think of the kinetics that you use and then your kinetics of isomerization kinetics or the Gibbs spectra or the study of isomerism, chromium isomerism using UV spectra or those kinds of words need to be appearing in your title. Of course, nothing more than 15 words or around about 15 words, good criteria to, to help you write it. Um, you can use the general guidelines at the end of your PRAC guide to give you a better idea of how to do this as well. The abstract. So an abstract, of course, is a summary of your report. And most people generally just read the abstracts and then they decide whether or not they want to read the rest of your report. But the abstract is actually, like I say, a whole summary. So it needs to introduce the field. So it has like a short introductory sentence to say, this is going to be a study about this, this these things. Then it gives the main theory that needs to be used. In other words, this is a study about chromium complexes. Um, it uses iso or uh, what kind of isomerism? Is it optical isomers, geometric isomers that we're looking at? What kind of isomers are we looking at? What kind of synthetic techniques that, did we use? Um, whose synthetic techniques did we use? What, what, whose kinetic theory did we use to look at it, the kinetics? And then it establishes what were the results? How, what, what did we find? Like, you know, what were the main things that we looked at? And um, what are the colors that we observe? Um, what issues did we experience? What can we then suggest for future work? How can we improve it? Where can the study go from? So basically everything that you get in your entire report, so meaning your introduction, your results, your discussion, all that you actually summarize in the abstract as like a mini a mini report, the abstract is your mini report, basically summary, summarizing everything that comes in the entire report later on. So if a lazy person was to read that abstract, they must understand understand the entire report. So start with introducing the field and state the aim of the experiment. So give the main results and then mention the possible errors and how you want to fix them in the future and finish off with how the experiment may be built upon. So, in other words, what can people do in the future? Can they maybe study other complexes, says, um, kinetics, or can you use other types of spectra to study kinetics? Um, what can we do? How can we improve this experiment, essentially? What kind of future work? Generally, where a, an abstract ends. Um, so firstly, on the introduction, aim, and background. Now, you can split this into two headings, so introduction and background. So, you know, have a first heading introduction, a second heading background, or you can just have one heading introduction and underneath that have background, or just have a heading introduction and sort of discuss the background um, in there. That's uh, completely fine. Of course, the AIMS never has its own, has its own heading. It's always just... Um, the, the, essentially, the first paragraph states the aims um, of the of the experiment. So that one is does not have its own heading. <clears throat> it's just the background and the introduction that you can play around with, however you feel like. That's your own creative input. Um, so, like I said, you usually start with stating the aim, but you do not say the aim of the experiment. Well, be creative in how you explain what you're going to do. Uh, in this study, 
you will investigate um, uh, or you start the something isomerization forms a fundamental part of inorganic chemistry and provides the first goal of this study. You know, it's just a creative way to say the aim of this experiment was. I mean, reading the aim of this experiment was, was such, such a great two kind of way of saying things. So be creative, try to spread your academic wings um, a bit more. And like I say, the aim must still be concise describe the output of what we are trying to study here quite well. Um, so yeah, so essentially, what is your introduction going to look like? So let's say you're going to put everything under one section. So one, so just one heading introduction. I think the first paragraph should always start with your aim. You know, it starts with what you're going to study. And then remember the background starts to elaborate on the necessary theory and what has been done um, why is this important? Um, why is this necessary to study? What is the importance of the study, etc.? And it's about five paragraphs, you know, a page to a page and a half, um, depending on how large the study is. So that's your guideline. If it's two headings, then the introduction, I would say, is about three paragraphs, background, uh, or sorry, introduction is about two paragraphs, background, about three paragraphs. Give or take. Um, I'll spend some time now on what I'm going to want, what I want specifically, um, some points I want you to discuss. But in a general context, this is what it is. So not too excessive for your your um, ends, but um, yeah. So choose from the beginning whether or not you want to make it one heading, or you want to split it into two headings, or you want to make it a heading with a subheading. So once you've figured out what you want to do with the headings, then you know, okay, under the background, so the introduction discusses the aims and where we're going, why we're going there, right? And the background always discusses some relevant theory to the study. So it's sort of, you know, and the importance. So, the, you know, the background to the study. So essentially, the textbook that you need to read. So anything that you need to read up on to understand the results and discussion, even though you're not really writing the results and discussion for this experiment, you can include here. So some good ideas um, that you need to cover are Gunnenheim's method, the importance of kinetics, importance of isomerism, essentially what are these things as well. Um, you know, so don't just say kinetics, you know, what is kinetics, isomerism, shortly discuss you know, what cis and trans octahedral isomers are, how can you identify them, etc. Um, and then I would like you to add about two more points to, um, to these. Uh, so discuss these and add about two of your own points would be good for you to, to have extra. Um, yeah, also discuss important aspects of the experiment in context of the experiment. So why is these why is this background specifically important? So how does this now relate to the experiment? This is an important part. Um, so in other words, why are you discussing good enhancement? It's because we're going to use it and we have a situation where we have an ice, two isomers absorbing at the same um, wavelength, and hence we need to use good enhanced method. Or isomerism, why is it important? Okay, we're looking at two different isomers and they have applications in X, Y, Z and whatever, whatever. You know, that's why it's important. Um, yeah, some general ideas. Remember, isomerism, the cool thing about it is, you know, isomerism properties, one, one thing can cause can or can cure cancer and the other thing can cause blindness. It's always very interesting for me how that works. Um, but, okay, I was just on the point of that. So, elaborate on the, the theory and then connect it onto why it is important. Um, that's always the base thing. So, have the reader this understand what is it, why are you focusing on this, and what is it important later, why do they need to understand it now. And a good idea is always like what is discussed in the um, in the practical guide, but don't just copy the practical guide. I mean, that is already there. We know what's in the practical guide. I've, I've written the practical guide, so I know excessively, extensively what is in there. So don't just copy the equation or anything from there, like build upon it go into deep, more detail. Um, you can use it as a guide on as ideas, but then just copy from there. Okay, so 
discuss or so decide what you want your structure as and then discuss the have five points on which you're going to build your paragraphs and like i said i said five paragraphs i mean it's not a set in stone thing it can be 10 it can be six it can be seven and a half for that okay it's the point is um it's just a general guide um so no more than two pages preferably um, that would be more than enough um but of course like if you go to two and a half that's also perfectly fine like just don't go to 20. Like that's all i'm trying to say okay so let's move to the assignment question we should be used, by, used, to, used to it by now, but we use the real side of chemistry referencing or citation style. Um, so ensure that you use that. Just ensure that you are consistent with all the spacings, full stops, italics, and bold, and use of that. You use Mendeley, then that will sort it out with you, for you. And you're using actual academic references, like the ones that we provide on ClickUp and any others that you actually find. So ensure that your referencing is um, done well and of course because you're earning some marks for that so that's very useful that's a, a few free marks essentially that you can earn then the specific questions um question one and two really easy some first year work for you to re recover or to cover again should be okay um question three just because i know it sort of falls in between during the time that you learn about complexes and you're not um that depth yet at um, everything that you need to be. Um, I want to look at how to draw these structures and just looking at the charges and what everything means, etc. So if we look at the ML3 complex, so that's the, the, the tris chromium complex from synthesis 2.1.1. This is how you need to draw the line structures. So in other words, you have the thick bonds coming out of the plane, the dash bonds going back, and you have the lines, just your axial bonds are always like that. So you can always start with something like that, right? Um, and essentially here, you always just need to be cognizant of these charges. So aqua ligands don't have a charge, um, but your oxalata ligands, all, all the oxygens have a minus charge. So this has a minus, this has a minus, this has a minus, 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 minus right so those are six minuses chromium is in the three plus oxidative state and that's where we get this three minus from and that three minus indicates that there's three potassium plus ions that counter that minus that's why this is called a counter ion and that means this entire crystal species is neutral so that's why there's a charge of zero over there okay very, very ugly drawn zero but okay that's where there's no charge over there okay and that's what i want from you when you're drawing your crystal structures and you can use reaxis to draw these structures you can also use um, all sorts of uh, drawing software chem sketch um, to draw these structures or if you really 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 need to draw them by hand then you may um, but just know that I will pity you because you are then illiterate in terms of the, your skills. So um, anyway, right. So that is um, that is this point. So that's how you need to draw these. Remember, and then of course when the aqua ligands come in, and you just have like two of these, and you have, for example, the aqua ligands either cis or the aqua ligands will be trans to one another. You just substitute and draw in the, the oxalato ligands differently. And then, of course, this charge changes and the number of potassium ions changes. That's the molecular formula. This is the structural formula. The structure, the, st the structural formula, yeah. This is the structure. This is the structural formula because this contains the counter ions. Okay. Um, just another point on the specifically the ML3 complex. Remember, there's a question that asks about its optical or geometrical isomer. I'm going to give you a hint, draw its mirror image. So in other words, take the mirror image of this and draw that. Should give you the isomer. And when I say mirror image, then something should ring about like what kind of isomer it is 
because, I mean, the mirror has to do with some sort of optic capacity that we need to use. So anyway, um, cool. That is uh, all I want to say about question three. Then uh, question five and five and six again are easy things to do. And question seven, you know, we will mark with any mistakes that you make from question six. So if whatever you identify, we will continue on with and make the best for you because we aim to please at UP. Um, and like I say, please ensure that you plot the relevant graphs. There are about six. So remember all those graphs that I plot in the pre-practical lecture. You can plot any one of those to show and explain and discuss and you know, go into lengths. I think a lot of you will enjoy having some physical chemistry here because it's the most pure chemistry. You know, it's it's very it's nice to to, to every now and again have some physical chemistry again. Um, essentially, it's the most important graph is that of equation 218. So that's the line, the line of base, or the straight line, uh, the one where you get k from, the rate constant from. That's the most important graph, and it should be somewhere. So that should be one of your six graphs. Um, and also, I want to ask you where, or want to give you a hint towards where the best comparative data will be found time-wise. Because you should see the, where should you see the best separation between the old and the fresh isomerization? So between the first, like zero and 600 seconds of the measurement, or will you see it later on? So remember, we're looking at the difference, and the old or the fresh um, isomerization is going to tend towards the old isomerization. So where is the best place to look at the isomerization kinetics? Is it in, is it at the beginning or is it at the end? And remember, I said this time is just, it's technically irrelevant. You can look at the time at any point. So you can break up these graphs if you would like and look at specific times. Um, that's okay. It's up to you. Use your, it's an open ended answer, this. There's a lot of, the memorandum is like 20 pages long. So you need to show that you understand more than you're able to get the right answer. Okay, That's a big hint. So I'm interested in your understanding here more than I'm interested in you getting just the answer. Okay. So that's, um, that's my final, my final resting words on this practical. Um, other than that, I think this should be a nice practice. It should be an easy one. It's your first, Synthesis of complexes should be cool. We should enjoy the colors. And uh, yeah, um, I hope I wish you the best of luck and may the odds be ever in your favor.